cities. Joining us now is Iowa Congresswoman Marionette Miller-Meeks, a member of the House Homeland Security Committee. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being with us. Well, uh, good morning. Good Saturday morning to you, Tom. I'm delighted to be with you. So the Biden uh, photo op at the border, uh, no migrants, uh, <laughs> uh, no, not a migrant to be seen, not an illegal immigrant to be seen, didn't go over well. The administration uh, coming out of last week announced a new website and a new mobile app that they, they think will help what they call continue uh, to, uh, to call these, these asylum seekers. Secretary Mayorka saying in part, quote, after the Title 42 order is lifted, this scheduling mechanism will be available for non-citizens, including those who seek to claim asylum, to schedule a time to present themselves at the point of entry for inspection and processing rather than arriving unannounced. So, Congresswoman, essentially... The Biden administration says, we just kind of want you to knock first um, before you enter, and then we'll let you in and put you on welfare, put you up in a hotel, et cetera. Your reaction? You know, I think you're correct to call this a photo op. There is only one reason President Biden went to the border, and that's because Republicans want a majority in the House. And one of the reasons we want a majority in the House is people want to have a secure nation. Uh, so it's not just the people coming across the border, 4.5 million in the two years. It's the record number uh, of fentanyl. Uh, it is the people, the known gotaways. So we know about 70,000 people got through the border. Um, you know, they were detected by censors, uh, but they were not uh, apprehended. Mm -hmm. And how many got away that we don't know? So it's a huge national security risk. 107,000 people died last year of drug overdoses. Uh, most of those related to fentanyl or synthetic fentanyl. And these are young people, 18 to 45 years of age. President Trump put in policies that work. President Biden, the first thing he did through executive orders was to mm -hmm. dismantle all those policies, yeah. even though the courts have said those policies should remain in place, such as Title 42. We know the remain in Mexico policy. And, you know, it's not true when Secretary Mayorkas comes before the Homeland Security Committee and says that we have operational control of the border. What he means is that we're processing people, um, but we don't have operational control. The sure. numbers are staggering coming yeah. across the border. Yeah. And you even now have yeah. Democrat mayors in blue cities that are, uh, you know, complaining about the number of uh, illegal immigrants yeah. that are arriving at their doorstep. Yeah, and Ma Mayor Eric Adams in New York is apparently heading down. He's a, a, a potential presidential prospect, I, I, in his mind at least. He, he's going down to the border. Now he's sounding the alarm over it as well. But Congresswoman, um, how are the Republicans going to address this crisis? Because this was a big part of the GOP's messaging in 2022, and voters are expecting action and not and, and and I would suggest not just a change at the top of DHS because I don't think that 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 voters believe that just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic is going to make the boat float. What is the house what are the house republicans going to do about this? Well, first let me just say an interesting observation very astute on your part and that is, you know, we have calls among republicans and and among those who support republicans to impeach secretary Mar Mayorkas, but you're correct. He's doing what the Biden administration and the Democrats want him to do. So just changing the figurehead at the top isn't going to change what they're doing with an open border policy. Mm -hmm. But I think that, um, you know, first and foremost, Newsmax, you know, other outlets have covered what's happening at the border. It is a crisis. We almost uh, heard the administration's press secretary. She actually said crisis uh, last week. Um, we know that it was a sanitized version of what's happening in El Paso. I've been to El Paso. I've been to Del Rio. Yeah. I have been to McAllen. I know that was a sanitized version, right. uh, what was relayed. Sure. But first and foremost, we can have border hearings at the border. So we can talk about the border yeah. at the border, and yeah. that's going to force the mainstream media to cover this issue so that everybody in the United States is aware of what's yeah. happening at the border and that it is a crisis. You know, yeah. another one of the things that we can do, and, and we've already done that before our committees were set up, the Energy and Commerce Committee had a hearing on the fentanyl crisis and the opioid crisis. So every one of these committees, whether it's Judiciary, Homeland Security, um, Oversight Committee, they can hold hearings on what's happening at the border, sure. continue to bring but, attention to it. But, Another thing we can do is to push to have asylum hearings at the border with administrative law judges. So rather than people coming inward, uh, to the interior of the United States. Those hearings are held there. And so people aren't leaving the border with a little slip of paper that says, 
come back for your hearing, your asylum hearing. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think that holding the hearings is a, is, a, is a solid idea, but I think people are looking for legislation, and particularly Republican voters are looking for legislation that puts Democrats on defensive. Uh, we saw the, the Republican House do that with respect to the IRS and the 87,000 uh, agents this week. Uh, give, give me a piece of legislation that, that your committee and that the, con the Republican conference is prepared to advance that would do that, that would put Democrats in the Senate and the White House on the defensive to try to do something concrete about this issue. Well, the new chair of Homeland Security is Representative Mark Green from Tennessee. He has uh, pieces of legislation that he's going to be advancing. Mm -hmm. We have Representative Chip Roy, who has an immigration bill. Um, as you know, I think there are there are things that we can do as far as moving asylum hearings. Uh, I do think we'll be able to get some of the Democrats on board, such as Representative uh, Cuellar. But so far, the Democrats have held pretty firm mm. uh, on uh, on their votes against the things that we've advanced, such as you mentioned, the IRS agents. And then we have to deal with the Senate. So, mm. you know, as we look at this process, more exposure, more broad exposure, having mm. hearings at the border, and then uh, trying to get administrative law judges doing smart things that will allow us to continue to push against the Biden administration. Mm. Uh, just getting the president to go to the border was a win for Republicans because yeah. he had not done that, nor had uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, who is supposedly right. the border czar yeah. and trying to fix this issue. Well, people, and then the other thing is yeah. we're empowering and emboldening the cartels. The cartels have become much stronger and richer, True. much wealthier throughout this process. So getting yeah. some control over that aspect, too, with our local law enforcement who are overburdened, both right. uh, Customs and well, Border and those law enforcement in cities we're, where uh, migrants are going. Well, we're certainly going to be looking out for the specific moves uh, because people, as you point out, they're, they're, they're far more, they're not interested in photo ops, they're interested in concrete action at this point. Congress